Welcome back to Not Your Grandma's Opera. This is going to be Opera Plots and Cocktails, Episode 3. We're going to talk about the opera Tosca by Giacomo Puccini. And we're going to make a cocktail called Scarpia's Blood. So, let's start with the cocktail. First, you want your cocktail shaker full of ice. Now, we're going to want two ounces of white rum. I've got my Bacardi. It was on sale. I was very happy, which is why I bought a huge thing of it. So we want two ounces of this. So usually I just measure with my heart because that's who I am. But for the purposes of this video, I will actually be measuring it. Two ounces or two shot glasses. And then we want one ounce or one shot of peach schnapps. Oh, that smells good. I miss shops, even though I only had it once, but I loved it. And then we want three ounces or three shots of blood. It's particularly Scarpia's blood. Just kidding. It's just cherry juice, but it looks kind of cool. So I'll do three shots of this. This is tart cherry juice. I was hoping for something a little bit sweeter, but unfortunately they don't sell that at Safeway. They only sell tart cherry juice. So tart cherry juice is what we got. But in order to kind of sweeten it up a little bit so it's not so tart, we're going to also put a splash of grenadine in here. You can put as much, as little as you like, as much as you like. If you don't want grenadine, that's fine too. So now we're going to shake it up. Get my martini glass ready. Even though it's technically not a martini, I still like to serve in a martini glass just because it really looks nice. Here we go. Here, let me put that there. There we go. It's coming out very red in color. Which is why, what exactly, what I wanted. I'll take a sip. Oh, that's really good. I really like that. If you like fruity cocktails, this is the one for you, for sure. This is really super tasty. Okay, so let's talk about some Tosca and why this cocktail is called Scarpia's Blood. Who is Scarpia? Why is his blood everywhere? We're about to find out. So as I said before, Tosca was written by Giacomo, Giacomo, Giacomo Puccini with the libretto by Luigi Iliaca and Giuseppe Giacosa. It premiered in Rome on January 14th, 1900, and it was based on Sardo's 1887 French language play, La Tosca. It's set in Rome in 1800 with the Kingdom of Naples in control of Rome being threatened by the, the Neapolitan invasion of Italy. Okay, so Act 1. Act 1, we are inside the church of Sant'Andrea della Valle. So Cesare Angolotti, a former consul of the Roman Republic and now an escaped political prisoner, prisoner hides in the At Atlavanti private chapel. Meanwhile, an elderly sacristan enters and begins cleaning. No big deal there. The painter Mario Cavadorossi arrives to continue his work on a picture of Mary Magdalene. The sacristan states a likeness between the portrait and of a blonde-haired woman who has been frequenting the church. This blonde-haired woman happens to be Angolotti's sister. Cavadorossi describes the hidden harmony and contrast of his painting to his dark-haired beauty, the love of his life, the singer Flora Tosca. Sacrison is annoyed and leaves. Angolotti emerges and tells Cavadorossi that he has been pursued by the chief of police, Baron Scarpia. He's right here. Scarpia. Cavadorossi promises to help him that night. Tosca is then heard. Um, she's coming to find Cavadorossi. So she enters and thinks that Cavadorossi has been talking to another woman. And then Cavadorossi, of course, reassures her she's the only one for him, blah, blah, blah. Then Tosca expresses jealousy over the woman in the painting because it's not her. Again, Cavadorossi says, don't worry, it's not about you. And so then she leaves. Angolotti reappears to discuss plans for escapes. Uh, Cavadorossi has also given him a basket of food at this point. 
So Capodrossi then gives Engolotti the key to his villa and suggests that he hide in the garden there because nobody uses this garden, okay? So the sound of cannon mean that Engolotti's escape has been discovered. He and Capodrossi hasten out of the church. Hasten, hasten. Is it, is it the rum? It might be the rum. Anyway, Sacristan re-enters with the choristers and they're celebrating that Napoleon has been defeated, defeated at Marengo. Celebration sees as Scarpia and his henchmen, Spalletta, and some police arrive to look for Angolotti. Scarpia orders the church searched and finds the empty food basket and the Atavanti fan. Scarpia questions Sacristan and learns that Capodrossi has been there. Tosca arrives looking for Capodrossi, and Scarpia arouses her jealousy by implying a relationship between Capodrossi and Angolotti's sister. Scarpia shows her the fan, and she falls for the deceit and rushes to find Capodrossi. Scarpia then sends Spalletta to follow her. He privately gloats that he will possess Tosca and execute Capodrossi. A procession enters the church, and that's Act 1! You know, got to end with a nice big procession in church, right? Act two. We're in Scarpia's apartment at the Palazzo Farnese. Scarpia sends Tosca a note to come to his apartment. Spoletta arrives, reporting that Angolotti remains at large, but Cavadorossi has been captured and is in questioning. Cavadorossi is brought in and interrogated just as Tosca's voice is heard singing a cantata elsewhere in the palazzo. She enters to see Cavadorossi being escorted out. Cavadorossi tells her not to say anything. Scarpia tells her that if she gives up Engolotti, she can save Cavadorossi's torture. And at first she does resist, but then she hears Cavadorossi being tortured. So she then gives up Engolotti. Scarpia orders the torture to cease and Cavadorossi is brought back in. I can't say this one for whatever reason, but I'm going to try. Schiarone, another agent, enters saying that there was an upset at Marengo and the French are still marching on Rome. So Napoleon's still coming. He actually wasn't defeated. So Cavadorossi gloats to Scarpia that his reign of terror will soon be at an end. This is enough for Cavadorossi to be considered guilty and is taken to be executed. Scarpia offers Tosca a bargain. If she gives himself, herself to him, Cavadorossi will be free. At first she refused, and then here's the drums for the execution. She prays to God, asking why he has abandoned her. And this is the big, glorious aria visidarte. She tries to offer money. He won't take it. Spoleto returns, saying that Angolotti has killed himself on discovery and that all is ready for Cavadrosi's execution. Scarpia looks to Tosca, who agrees to submit. He tells Spoletta to arrange a mock, mock, mock execution. Tosca insists he must provide safe conduct out of Rome for her and Cavadrossi. He agrees. While he is writing the safe conduct, Tosca takes a knife from the table. Scarpia finishes and walks over to embrace her. She stabs him to death. Mm, mm, mm. Now he's dead. And as she stabs him, she screams, this is Tosca's kiss. After he is dead, she removes the safe conduct, lights candles and places a crucifix on his body. Then he leaves. Act three. Now they're at the upper parts of the Castel Sant'Angelo. A shepherd boy is heard offstage singing as a church bell sounds for matins. Guards lead Cavadrossi and inform him he has one hour to live. He declines a priest, but asks to write Tosca. He begins to write, but is overwhelmed. Tosca enters and tells Cavadrossi of what happened. She tells him it's a sham and he must feign death, and then they can escape together. Cavadrossi is led away and Tosca praises it for being so real. She runs to Cavadrossi only to find that Scarpia betrayed her and Cavadrossi is dead. The bullets were in fact real. Voices of the men are heard shouting, Scarpia is dead and Tosca has killed him. 
They rush in. Tosca evades them and runs to the parapet. She flings herself over to her death. So as you can see, this opera is full of lots of blood. Technically, Angelotti's blood's the first blood to be spilled, but he does it himself and he, off stage. So this is Scarpia's blood. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe.